merciful, Lord, save your people from all evil. Lord, save your people from every sin. Lord, save your people from the snares of the devil. Lord, save your people from anger and hatred. Lord, save your people from every evil intention. Lord, save your people from everlasting death. Lord, save your people by your coming as human. Lord, save your people by your birth. Lord, save your people by your baptism and fasting. Lord, save your people by your sufferings and cross. Lord, save your people by your death and burial. Lord, save your people by your rising to new life. Lord, save your people by your return in glory to the Father. Lord, save your people by your gift of the Holy Spirit. Lord, save your people by your coming again in glory. Lord, save your people. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hate nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and honest hearts, so that truly repenting of our sins, we may receive from you, the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Joel, chapter 2. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will return and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people. Sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants, at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, Where is their God? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 2. Rid yourself, therefore, of all malice and all guile, insincerity, envy, and all slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow into salvation 
if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And, like living stones, let yourselves be build, built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to you, O Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, O Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Return to the Lord your God, who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding steadfast love. Glory to you, O Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter, beginning with the first verse. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirits, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, peace, and mercy be to you from your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessings come cheap these days. You can sneeze on an airplane and receive two or three blessings on the spot. And if you did it now, I'm sure you would receive lots of ugly looks as well with COVID happening. Bless you, they would say, and it doesn't cost you a dime. If you have a cold or allergies, you might even get blessed many times over a single day. But beyond those bless yous you get for sneezing, we really don't hear the word bless very often, do we? In the Bible, God gives out many blessings. God's first blessing came on the fifth day of creation. After creating birds and fish, Genesis tells us that God blessed them with the promise that they would multiply. And when you come to the end of the Bible and Revelation, there are no less than seven blessings from God scattered throughout the book. Throughout the scriptures, there are countless examples of God blessing God's children. 
The Greek word used for blessed in the New Testament is makarios. At the front of that word, you can hear the prefix mac, as in macro, meaning to make large or long. It's that word Jesus uses in his famous Beatitudes at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. To bless someone, then, is to extend or make greater what you have, what you have by you actually reaching out and giving to another. Tonight, our Lenten series on Jesus' Sermon on the Mount starts off with the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes are not wishes. Jesus isn't saying, may you be poor in spirit, or may you hunger and thirst after righteousness. The blessings are descriptive statements. In them, Jesus is telling his disciples that this is how you need to live and witness to the kingdom of God. More than that, the Beatitudes are exclamations, even celebrations, of those who will follow Jesus. It's as if Jesus is saying, how blessed are the meek, how blessed are the peacemakers. Jesus' Sermon on the Mount comes early in Matthew's Gospel. We know from reading Matthew's Gospel that the disciples are at this point in the story confused and have yet to grasp what the kingdom of God is that Jesus is offering them. But even in the disciples' confusion, Jesus had confidence that the kingdom would eventually take hold in people's lives. So the Beatitudes for Jesus were words of hope and desires for his followers. On this Ash Wednesday, I want to focus briefly on three of Jesus' blessings that stand out for us. The first one is, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We come this day as the poor in spirit. That is, we come with nothing to offer God but our sins and our needs. We come just as we are, both saint and sinner, in need of God's forgiving grace. Now here's something interesting to note. Found in Martin Luther's pocket after he died was a scrap of paper with several scribbles in his handwriting. Among the notes to self was this one. This is true. We are all beggars. Perhaps Luther was commenting on the fact that we can gain nothing on our own, that we need God's forgiveness in our lives. That means to us cross-mark sinners as we start this Lenten season that we need to remember that we come to the kingdom with all the grace and forgiveness that we need to be blessed by God. We are truly sinners coming to Christ for forgiveness and wholeness. Only Jesus can give this blessing of blessed are the poor in spirit because only Jesus ushered in the kingdom of heaven by emptying himself and taking on the form of a suffering servant in our place. He earned this blessing for us by becoming poor in spirit, and his humility took him all the way to the cross. Another blessing, which is especially ours today, comes in this beatitude. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. We are blessed today to have godly grief over our sin. You may recall a few times in your own life where maybe you deeply disappointed your parents or a parent. I'll never forget the time, I think I was maybe 13 or so, when I started talking back to my parents. And my parents told me at the time that if I didn't get a little bit better, that they were going to start looking in boarding schools for me. Well, guess what? I shaped up. Well, no doubt, you too can remember a time when you disappointed someone and how the sadness that you felt inside was profound. Some people never get over that sadness and are never able to make things right with someone that they hurt. The same is true many times over in our relationship with God. Sin is not objective or neutral. It is deeply relational. When we sin, we deeply disappoint our loving God, and it leaves us sad. It's this godly grief combined with our faith that brings us to repentance. In sorrow, we turn from our sins to face the cross of Jesus Christ, and we are forgiven. Here again, only Jesus can give us the comfort we need. We have the comfort of our God's forgiveness because of Jesus giving up his life for us. Jesus did not disappoint God. He took our sins on himself and died for us. And that's why Jesus is the only one who can comfort us in our godly grief over sin. 
And the third blessing comes to us on this Ash Wednesday is when Jesus said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. It's worth noting that this blessing clearly flows from the previous ones. It's not enough to be humble and repentant, or for that matter, to be meek. This would leave us alone with God. This beatitude reminds us that we have to live a life and that people that to live a life with. In other words, that we don't just live a life on our own. We live a life in this world with those that we live in this world with. So our hunger and thirst for righteousness reveals to us a deep desire to be right with God and right with others. In his best-selling book, Some Kind of Different as Me, a once homeless sage named Denver Moore writes the following. There's something I learned when I was homeless. Our limitation to, is God's opportunity. When you get all the way to the end of your rope and there ain't nothing you can do, that's when God takes over. This is what yearning for righteousness looks like, letting God take over. There will always be a time when we will reach the end of our ropes. The righteousness we seek, only a righteousness that God can give us. And it does not come cheap. It comes at the cost of the life of Jesus Christ on the cross. This is the righteousness of the heart that we receive through faith in God's Son. Jesus' perfect righteousness becomes ours as we place our trust in him. From his righteousness flows all of our right decisions, right relationships, and right reactions. In Jesus, we are blessed and made whole again. So as we begin our Lenten journey, we Christians are supposed to look different from the rest of humanity. Our Christ-like humility, our godly grief, and our righteousness of faith mark us as unique. In these blessings of Christ, we can look at each other and say to one another, Remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Amen. in Christ, today with the whole church, we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover 
from death to life, and our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy in communion with God, to love one another, and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbor, and creation, so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to the discipline of Lent, self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love, strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament, Let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. We are dust, and to dust we shall return. But our God is faithful and just. When we confess our sins, he covers us in his righteousness and gives us new hope. Most merciful God, dust is our destiny. We are impure. We are at war against you and our fellow human beings in what we say, in what we think, and in what we do. We have even left undone the good things you have commanded us to do. We do not deserve the kingdom of heaven. Out of the depths of your perfect grace, please forgive us for the sins we have committed against you and against one another. Wash us clean and turn our rags into white robes so that we will rise from the dust of ashes to the glory of your grace. At this time, please raise your ashes if you have them. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penitence reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may sit the ashes back down. You have heard the holy and saving gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now receive the sign of that gospel on your body and in your heart that you may know the Lord and the power of his resurrection. At this time, we will invite you to make the sign of the cross on each other or yourself as we pray this litany. This litany is done without the ashes. That you may hear the gospel of Christ, the word of life, receive the cross on your ears. That you may see the light of Christ illuminating your way, receive the cross on your eyes that you may sing the praise of Christ, the joy of the church, receive the cross on your lips, that God may dwell within you, within you by faith, receive the cross on your heart, that you may bear the gentle yoke of Christ, receive the cross on your shoulders, that God's mercy may be known in your work, receive the cross on your hands, that you may follow in the way of Christ, receive the cross on your feet. Receive the cross as a sign, a sign of God's endless love and mercy for you. At this time, we now invite you to take the ashes, if you have them, and mark your forehead or the forehead of another in your um, home with the sign of the cross, saying, Remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return.
Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. O oh God, you call your church to be ministers of reconciliation throughout the world. Inspire your church in its proclamation of the gospel and guide its ministries to build up the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. O oh God, you created the earth and all its inhabitants and you declared that it is good. Protect mountains and valleys, animals and plants, and direct us to be good stewards of all you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our prayer. O God, you desire peace. Direct governments and leaders to work for the well-being of all people and raise up advocates to speak and serve on behalf of the downtrodden. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O God, you are our hope in the midst of despair, our help in the midst of sorrow, and our consolation in the midst of affliction. Grant comfort to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially all those who have been affected by the coronavirus, and support caregivers who attend to all in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, you are love, and you call us to love one another. Accompany with your grace those journeying toward baptism, and call us all to repentance as we prepare to celebrate Christ's death and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O God, you are our life and our salvation. We give you thanks for the righteous who have died in faith. Inspire us by their example to proclaim your steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all, and also with you. Please share a sign of that peace with those around you. Let us pray. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places, and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal, 
that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and prayers. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with the choir of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heavens, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, our living water and our merciful guide, together with rivers and seas, wells and springs, we bless and magnify you. We lead your people Israel through the desert and provided them with water from the rock. We praise you for Christ, our rock and our water, who joined us in our desert, pouring out his life for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await your salvation for all this thirsty world. Pour out your spirit on this holy food and on all the baptized gathered for the feast. Wash away our sin that we may be revived for our journey by the love of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in our kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus draws the whole world to himself. Come to this meal and be fed. At this time, it is right to get your communion elements out, and we will be having communion to together. What is blessed here has been blessed in your homes. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you 
take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, accompany our journey through these 40 days. Renew us in the gift of baptism that we may provide for those who are poor, pray for those in need, fast from self-indulgence, and above all, that we may find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You are what God made you to be, created in Jesus Christ for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing. In the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity, amen. Go forth into the world to serve God and glad with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.